All right, here we are. The lesson you guys have been waiting for. Or at least the one that I've been waiting to teach you guys. Okay, so we are finally going to get to graph ourselves some rational functions. So last lesson what we were doing is we came up with, like we were talking about the domain of the thing, can't divide by zero, and then we did our vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So now we're gonna get a new asymptote called a slant asymptote. I wonder where we're going to get that from. Hmm. Okay, and then the second objective, we're going to put everything together, all the asymptotes, all the zeros, x, y intercepts, and then finally come up with these really cool looking rational graphs. So, here's objective one. You will be able to find the slant asymptote of a rational function. So, if you look at the picture, this is a time-lapse photo of some airplanes taking off at night. And so those are its uh, like running lights or whatever. And it looks as if these are approaching some sort of slanted line. And that's what a slant asymptotes can look like. Now, you might ask yourself if it was a re if this was like in a real situation, a plane taking off. Would it continue on that, that slant forever? Well, if it did, then you would just be in outer space at some point and maybe finding it difficult to breathe. Anyway, so in a real life situation, it'd level off and then eventually land. And then, huh, did you see that? Slant asymptote. Anyway, so notice the title on this. Rational functions mean divide. And that's exactly what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the horizontal asymptote in a slightly different way. So if I look at this function f of x equals 2x squared over x squared plus 1, the degrees of the top and the bottom, they're exactly the same. This means I have myself a horizontal asymptote at the ratio of the leading coefficients, which is just 2, 2 over 1. Okay, here's the other way to look at it. That rational function means divide. The big division symbol means divide. So that's what, exactly what I'm going to do. So x squared plus 1 goes on the outside of the little division box, and then 2x squared inside, and then put some zeros and stuff for placeholders. Ask yourself, how many times does x squared go into 2x squared? It goes in there two times. Two times. There we go. And I'm going to put that 2 right above the 0, and I multiply the 2 times x squared plus 1. So I get 2x squared, and then plus 2. Whoops. Okay. And then you're supposed to subtract those. So draw your subtraction line, subtract, and I get a negative 2. That's the remainder, because x squared plus 1 doesn't go into that any more times. So I write that as 2 or minus 2 over x squared plus 1. So the function that we started with and the one we got from division, they're equivalent to each other. They just look a little different, okay? So these two are exactly the same thing. So if I look at the second function and it says two minus two over x squared plus one. Okay, so look at the fraction part. The two on the top stays the same always. And then on the bottom, we have x squared plus one and I can keep sticking in numbers for x. What happens is x gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, 2 stays the same, and then I'm getting a really, really big number on the bottom. That quantity is going to 0. It's approaching 0. And so the whole entire function is trying to look like f of x equals 2, or y equals 2. And that's exactly what our horizontal asymptote is. All right, let me give you a sneak preview of some calculus terminology. The stuff that's in blue right here, this is the way you would see it in calculus. It would be the limit, L-I-M, stands for limit, as x approaches infinity of that quantity, this 2 over x squared plus 1. And what we have just talked about is that this thing is getting closer and closer to 0. So that's, ex that's exactly what a horizontal asymptote is asking us to do. So um, let's look at another case. Let's look at the case where this time the degree of the top is bigger than the bottom. Well, when the degree of the top was bigger than the bottom, what we said is that we don't have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so let's divide and see what happens. So when we divide this time, uh, I need to put a whole bunch of zeros in there again. 
So x squared goes into 2x cubed, 2x times... <laughs> You're probably hearing quite a bit of noise out there. I don't know why, because this hall has B lunch, and this is B lunch. Anyway, so I take the 2x, and I multiply it times... And typo... This should be 2x cubed. There we go. And then uh, plus 2x. And then I'm supposed to subtract these. I get nothing over there on the right-hand side, minus 2x. And the divisor doesn't go evenly into that, so that's my remainder. So just like before, what I just came up with is equivalent to the original function, and so I can rewrite it like this. 2x minus 2x divided by x squared plus 1. Okay, so just like before, if I look at the fraction part, on the top the degree is 1, degree of the x is 1, and on the bottom it's 2. So the bottom is getting bigger faster than the top. So this whole fraction is approaching 0 as x approaches infinity, just like it was before. Now before you only had a 2 up top, and so it was going to 0 a little bit faster than this one. But still, this one approaches 0 as x approaches infinity. This time, what is your equation trying to look like? What's your original function trying to look like? f of x equals 2x, or y equals 2x. This is a new kind of asymptote. It's a slant asymptote because that's the equation of a line that has a slope of 2. A slant asymptote. So let's see when it was that we got ourselves a slant asymptote. If we look at the original function, I had a cube on top and I had a square on the bottom. The top's degree is bigger than the bottom, and when that happens, I have a slant asymptote. Now to be a little bit more specific though, look here. I have myself a slant asymptote if the numerator's degree is exactly one bigger than the denominator. n equals d plus one. Look back. So the top was three. I have a 3 on top, and the bottom is 2. 3 is exactly 1 bigger than 2. So that's why I have myself a slant asymptote. So the question is, how do I get the equation for the slant asymptote? Well, how did I get it before? I got it from dividing, and that's exactly what you want to do. To find the equation of the slant asymptote, you want to use long division, and then you forget about the remainder. Because what happens to the remainder? the remainder approaches zero anyway. It disappears. So we only want the quotient part. Now this says use long division, but occasionally we can use synthetic division if the denominator works out nice for us. All right, so here's a question for you. Can a rational function have both a slant asymptote and a horizontal asymptote at the same time? What do you think? Well, in order to have a slant asymptote, the degree of the numerator has to be equal to the denominator's degree plus 1. That means that the numerator's degree is bigger than the denominator. That gives us a slant. However, to get a horizontal, a horizontal asymptote comes from when d is either equal to n, as in the, the degrees of the top and the bottom are the same, or the denominator's degree is bigger than the bottom. That's saying the exact opposite of n is being greater than d. If they say the exact opposite thing, they can't both happen at the same time. So the answer here is no. They are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive. There we go. Um, mutually exclusive means that if one happens, the other can't happen. That's what we have here. Either we have a slant or we have a horizontal, but never both. So here's just one more exercise on this part about slant asymptotes, and that is, let's find all the asymptotes for this function. So I'm going to start with vertical asymptotes. How do I get vertical ones? I get them from where the denominator is equal to zero. So the vertical ones, what number makes the denominator equal to zero? It's x equals negative three. So there's the vertical asymptote. Horizontal. To get the horizontals, I'm comparing the degree of the top and the bottom. Here I have a degree of 2, and here I have a degree of 1. The top is bigger than the bottom, so you don't have any. 
none. And since the top is one more than the bottom, I do have a slant asymptote. And how do I find the equation for the slant asymptote? I do division. Look at what I have here. I'm dividing by x plus 3. I don't have to do long division on this one. I can do synthetic division. Put negative 3 outside the box. And then I have across the top a 2, negative 15, and an 8. So bring down the 2. Negative 6, negative 21 when you add them up. And then multiply, I get 63, add them up, 71. The 71 is the remainder, and we don't care about it. It approaches 0 as x gets really, really big. So what we care about is the quotient, the stuff left over. So we have a 2x minus 21. So the equation of our slant asymptote is y equals 2x minus 21. There we go. We found our vertical asymptote and our slant asymptote. In the next couple of videos, all we're going to be doing is a whole bunch of graphing. <laughs>